With any discussion of continuity, we should also have a discussion of discontinuity. In this video, we're going to look at the different types of discontinuity. So remember, f is continuous at a, so a number a, if the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. And remember the three things that told us. One, f of a is defined. Two, this limit as x approaches a of f of x actually exists. And third, that limit that exists goes to the function value at a. All three of those things are necessary for a function to be continuous at a. So let's look at some graphs where one of those conditions fails. So here I have three different graphs of some functions all of which have some form of discontinuity at a. So here we see that f of a is defined. So the first condition isn't, um, the first condition is met. However, there's this jump in the graph. The limit as x goes to a from the left is f of a, and the limit as x goes to a from the right is some other value not equal to f of a. So since the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x doesn't equal the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x, we have this jump in the graph, okay? And we call this a jump discontinuity. Easy enough. Okay, in the second graph, we see that f of a isn't even defined, right? So the first condition isn't even met. Also, this limit as x approaches a doesn't exist either because it goes off towards infinity. So call these things two different, or I've, we could call this kind of discontinuity at a two different things. We can call it an infinite discontinuity, or you may hear it as a asymptotic discontinuity. Because as I approach a from either the left or the right, my function goes off towards plus or minus infinity, which means that it creates a vertical asymptote. All right, and then this last one, well, we see here that f of a isn't even defined. But this one is kind of a special one, because I could create a new function. We won't call it f because f is how we've defined it here. So a new function based on this f right here, I'll draw it to the right, that looks just like f, like that a. So it's going through, so now it still looks like f, except at a, I'm going to fill it in with this value right here. And what do you think that value is relative to this? Well, let's call this L1. So it's L1 over here. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equals L1. Now, it doesn't equal f of a because f of a is not defined. So if I create this new function over here, we'll say it's g, that looks like f everywhere except at a, I fill it in with its limit, then what we have, what kind of discontinuity this is, is a removable discontinuity. Okay, and that's pretty cool. Let's actually look at uh, an example of a removable discontinuity. Okay. If I have this function, f of x equals x plus 2 over x minus 3. And let's make the top actually x minus 3 and the bottom x plus 1. Okay, so if this is our function right here. We see already that there is two discontinuities one at x equals to 3, and one at x equals negative 1. Now, if you notice there that when x equals 3, it's 0 on both top and bottom, and that actually creates a hole in the graph, 
at x equals 3. At x equals negative 1, since it's not 0 at the top as well, this actually creates an asymptote. So if it's an asymptotic discontinuity, we can't remove it by creating this new function. However, I'm going to define g of x to be equal to f as long as f is not equal to 3. And then I want to put something here. I want g to be defined at 3 and such that makes my function g continuous at 3. Well, remember what it means for g to be continuous at 3. This means that the limit as x approach, approaches 3 of g of x must be equal to g of 3. So the answer to what goes in here is found by evaluating this limit right here. So since g is defined the same way f is for all values away from 3, I replace this limit x to 3 of x plus 2 x minus 3 over x minus 3 x plus 1. Remember I can cancel these out when I'm looking at the limit. So this equals the limit as x goes to 3 x plus 2 over x plus 1, which is, now I can do direct substitution, 5 fourths. So if I define this g to be f everywhere but at 3, and 5 fourths at 3, which is the limit of f as x goes to 3, then what I've created is this function that is continuous at x equals 3. That is, this was a removable discontinuity. I can't do anything about the discontinuity at negative 1, but I can create this new function whose f everywhere away from 3 and is also continuous at 3.